let's 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 start by talking about um, how about par. What about the importance of par with a uh, you know with with lighting for a reef tank? You know, so <clears throat> I never have owned a par meter. I've always used metal halide lighting, but for the first time a couple of months ago, I did rent a par meter to put under my metal halides to see what kind of par I had coming out. And I used 400 watt um, 20K radium bulbs with a uh, supplemental T5s over my 187 gallon tank. <clears throat> and with my new tank, the 225 gallon peninsula tank, I've got uh, six GHL Mitros over that tank. Those are LEDs. So I really wanted to kind of see what the par was for the LEDs versus the metal halides. And, and um, you know, the new tank, the peninsula tank is only 20 inches tall. So it's not a very deep um, tank. And the other tank is like 100, uh, the 187 gallon tank is like 24 inches tall. Anyway, what I was finding is that the, um, the par numbers in my, um, under my halides were in the 200 to 300, maybe the 350 range, yet for the LEDs, they were in the four to 500 range. And that was just at, um, you know, 100% in terms of the LEDs. So how important is par for an SPS dominant tank in terms of getting growth and colors? Let's uh, let's start there, Tulio. Okay. Um, in terms of par, in terms of par, the interesting thing is, first of all, the difference in light sources. And what I mean by that is every light source has its own behavior. Okay. And we talk about par again as this, 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 this number. So for example, uh, I, I, I often use the example to people where if we were outside and it was a nice sunny day and Rich and I were having a conversation, if I broke out a, a magnifying glass and put it on Rich's arm, he's going to start to feel discomfort immediately. The interesting thing is though, has the energy from the sun changed? No, it's not. We've just squeezed the light. We focused it. And then obviously this is this is the reaction. So oftentimes based on lighting's behavior, the, the energy equivalent just by measuring par alone doesn't give us the big picture. There's a thing called inverse square law where basically if I took a measurement, let's say I, I took any light source, I'm at 12 inches and I measured its output. Then I went to, let's say, 24 inches, and I measured its output. Obviously, the output is going to be less at 24 inches than it's going to be at 12 inches. So what happened to that light? Did it just disappear? No. Light travels millions of light years in space without any problem. So a few feet of water is not a big deal. What happens is, based on inverse square law, the energy is still there. It's just now spread out over a wider field. Okay, it's just now spread out over a wider field. And the interesting thing is, is that if you started to take those energy measurements at 24 inches, for example, in quadrants, and then added it back up, you would see very little light loss because, again, a few feet of water is nothing for a photon. So, so PAR can be very useful, but it's useful as a reference because the one problem with PAR is unless you have a standard to compare it to. And what I mean by this is if you're absolutely certain of the spectral information, then PAR can be a useful tool. But if it's just PAR alone, I can take an HPS lamp that they use for hydroponics and things like that and give you a ridiculous PAR reading, but yet this is absolutely not a light source you would want over your reef aquarium. Hey, Tulio. Yeah. Is it still a thing where a PAR meter is like 20% plus or minus under LEDs? Maybe the blue spectrum of LED? That was a thing back in the day. You know, Ben, it, it's, it, it's interesting that you brought that up. So, for example, a lot of people are familiar with Apogee PAR meters, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what many people didn't realize. Now, I can't say for certain that that's absolutely still the case today. But basically, for many years... That meter was standardized, meaning it was calibrated and, and, and standardized based on a T5 lamp, not the sun. So, so yes, there were, that there were correction coefficients when measuring LEDs. They have gotten better, but what I find interesting is the PAR meter, which was basically came out, PAR came out in like the early 70s when uh, horticulture was looking for a better means of measuring light energy from the sun because they were using things like foot candles. So they came up with PAR. 
So if I'm trying to measure energy for the sun for horticulture, awesome. But if I'm using a T5 lamp to calibrate my meter, then obviously that's a different standardized source than the sun. And that's why if you notice with many PAR meters, there's two selections where you can do it based on the sun or you can do it on what they call electric and, and that electric source or, or artificial source, that's based on T5 lighting. So uh, Paula Powell had a comment. Uh, I find it interesting that the reef industry always refers to the photon flux density as PAR. Not sure why we don't use PPFD. And, and one other couple of quick uh, thank yous to Daniel Nadal uh, for the super chat. It says beef, whatever that is. And Johnny for the super chat says hit that thumbs up button. But um, Tulia, what about that comment from Paula Powell? Well, simply put, simply put, uh, PAR is a lot easier to say than PPFD. If you say photosynthetic photon flux density really fast, like six times, it just becomes a mess. So PAR was just like, you know how we always shorten words? Um, so PAR was just one of those things. You know, it, you know, people talk about PAR all the time. No different than people talk about pH all the time and literally have no idea what pH actually is, what the acronym actually means, and things like that. Hey, ben. I'm glad you brought that up uh, because it's it's PAR is interesting and useful sometimes, but because it's a number that you get a lot of people tend to just glom onto the number and then go, go a chase in numbers, which we all know is, uh, well, I guess we don't all know that, but which a lot <laughs> of us keep saying is, is a bad idea to go chasing numbers. So exactly. par, it's really interesting because it can give you a, an idea of the differences in intensity in different areas of your tank, you know? And I, I, I guess the, the, the rule of, you know, the, the general idea is more bright, better, right? Um, which is not always true, but is right. kind of sometimes often true. Um, so it's nice to kind of have an idea, but the real question kind of becomes, what are you going to do about it and why? And, you know, when I switch lights, when I change fixtures, I like to do a quick par check um, to see what's going on so I can either match or come in under the intensity and bring it up. Um but other than that, you know, almost all the lights that are available now are going to give you enough radiation, enough light to be able to grow whatever it is you want to grow almost at every depth. You know, unless you're going crazy, if you're, you know, more than 24 inches deep, you, you might want to do something extra. But but the stuff's really good now. It's not like, you know, 2002 when when it all we had was halides or Vita twist bulbs and we were just hoping. Um yeah. So I, I get a little, I'm, I'm happy that the information is there, and uh, I'm also a little bummed that the information is there, because there's a lot to tease out of it to be able to really know what you're getting at. So I like to just tell people, you know, it's just a relative number that you can use to see if you have more or less light in an area. And Keith, if I can, if I can jump back in, by the way, Rich, very well put. And, and the reason why I say this is because people say par and they latch on to that number. But if you think about this, if you think about this, since, since blue has become a big trend, for example, for many, for, yeah. for many aquariums, okay? And Richard, you've done your share of diving, right? So yep. here's the interesting thing. Uh, and, and, and Rich, I'll ask this question for, to you. To get that blue palette that I see in my aquarium, Right. Or, or like I'm one of these Grateful Dead tanks and I got the blue tank and, and the whole thing. My hey. point is, Rich, how deep would you have to dive till it gets just blue like that? Very oh, deep. like, yeah, 150 feet, 200 feet, maybe even more. Exactly. And, 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 and so the other thing that I try to explain to operists is what are your goals? Because, again, uh, 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 Rich, I, I'm pretty sure you know Dr. Charlie Mazel, right? Uh, he's the fluorescence guy, Night Sea and all oh, of that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Charlie and I go way back. So now what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a tank where we're eliciting fluorescence. And that is a process unto itself where a photon enters at one wavelength and leaves at another wavelength. And what the other thing that becomes very interesting, speaking about blue light, is that 
the shorter the wavelength of light, the shorter the wavelength of light, and this, this is what Rich was saying about too much is not always a good thing, but the shorter the wavelength of light, the higher the energy level of the photon. So the point is, is you're pumping these systems with all of this light, and unless other conditions are there for them to be able to utilize this energy, that can actually be detrimental. For example, like a house, you know, like a plant, a house plant. Well, it relies not only on photosynthesis, but there's the nutrients in the soil, the water, specific pH. There's all these other things that have to be in place in order for that, because you can have the best lighting system in the world for your plant, but if it doesn't have the nutrients, if it doesn't have the proper pH conditions and all these other conditions in place, so it can process and utilize that energy, you're going to have an unhealthy plant. 